Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Tupi Janavalla Bha Kiri Vardhari Jai Angopi Janavalla Bha Kiri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Pajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Pajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paramitaka Charja Ashtotar to the Shishi Mad to my grace Shila AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Iskan BBT Founder of Charja Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paramitaka Charja Ashtotar to the Shishi Mad His Divine Grace Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai Ananda Koti Vaishnavanda Ki Jai Nama Charja Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Samaveda Bhaktivinda ki jai. All glories to the Assembled Devotees. All glories to the Assembled Devotees. All glories to the Assembled Devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On the 16th day of October 2024 in San Diego, we've been Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are on in chapter 13, Nature, the Enjoyer in Consciousness, 
text number 16 on page 547. You weren't here, so, but that is the right one. Okay, good. Okay. Bahir Antash Chabutanam Acharam Charame Vacha Sukshmat Vat Tadabigayam Durastam Chantike Chatat Baharantash Tabutanam Acharam Chadame Vacha Sukshmat Vata the Vigayam Dorastam Chanti Ketchatat Baharantash Bhutanam Acharam Chadame Vacha Sukshmat Vata the Vigayam Dorastam Chanti Ketchatat Baharantash to Bhutanam Acharam Charame Vacha Sukshmat Vata the Vigayam Durastam Chanti Ketchatat So, sure. Page 547. You got it? Okay. Go ahead. Baharanchas the Bhutanam Acharam Charame Vacha Sukshmat Vata the Vigayam Dorastam Chanti Ketchatat Baharanthas the Bhutanam Acharam Charame Vacha Sukshmat Vata the Vigayam Dorastam Chanti Ketchatat 547, page 547. You're on. Baharantas Bhutanam Acharam Charame Vacha Sukshmat Vata the Vigayam Dorastam Chanti Ketchatat Baharantas to Bhutanam Acharam Charame Vacha Sukshmat Vata the Vigayam Durastam Chanti Ketchatat Back to Chad Baharantas Cha Bhutanam Baharantas to Bhutanam Charam Charam Evacha Acharam Charame Vacha Sukshmat Vata the Vigayam Durastam Chanti Ketchatat I think you've been practicing. Sounds like you improved the chanting. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Bahirantas <laughs> Chabhutanam Acharam Charam Evacha Acharam Charam Evacha Sukshmat Vata Sukshmat Vata the Vigayam Durastam Chanti Ketchata Durastam Chanti Ketchatat Okay, I'm going to do the synonyms. Bahi outside, Antaha inside, Cha also Bhutanam of all living entities, Acharam not moving, Charam moving, Eva also Cha and Sukshmat Vata on account of being subtle, Tat that Avigayam, unknowable. Durastam, far away. Cha also, antike, near. Cha and tat, that. Lord Krishna says to Arjuna, The supreme truth exists outside and inside of all living beings, the moving and the non-moving. Because he is subtle, he is beyond the power of the material senses to see or to know. Although far, far away, he is also near to all. Purport. In the Vedic literature, we understand that Narayan, the Supreme person, person, is residing both outside and inside of every living entity. He is present in both the spiritual and material worlds. Although he is far, far away, still he is near to us. These are the statements of the Vedic literature. 
आसिनो दूरम वजती शयानो याति सर्वथा कथा उपनिषद वन टू ट्वेंटी वन and because he is always engaged in transcendental bliss, we cannot understand how he is enjoying his full opulence. We cannot see or understand with these material senses. Therefore, in the Vedic language, it is said that to understand him, our material mind and senses cannot act. But one who has purified his mind and senses by practicing Krishna consciousness in devotional service can see him constantly. It is confirmed in the Brahma Samhita that the devotee who has developed love for the Supreme God can see him always without cessation. And it is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 1154 that he can be seen and understood only by devotional service. Bhaktya tananya shakya Om jnana timarandasya jnanandana salakya Chakshuram Nilatam Vena Tasmai Shri Gurudevayana Maha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master Sri the Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. Well, that verse is a perfect commentary, this is the idea. Om Ajnana Timarandasya. Welcome, to Taylor. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, uh, Krishna is continuing to answer Arjun's question. And I got a, an answer to my query to my Sanskrit advisor, BB San, BBT Sanskrit advisor, Kishore Prabhu, one of your god brothers, you know him? He's in Mayapur, one of Gopi Pranadana Prabhu's uh, students from his school that he had. It's more than many years ago, he tragically passed away in 2011. But he had trained up a next generation of Sanskrit scholars. And so he's one of them. And I asked uh, <clears throat> him whether in the third verse of this chapter, on page 531, where Krishna says, Chaitra Gyang Chapi Chaitra Gyanam 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 Mama. This uh, combination, Chaitra Chaitra Gayo, you see that? That's on page 531. And in the, sing, in the uh, synonyms, or the word-by-word -word meanings, we have Chaitra Gayoho, and the knower of the field. Whether that can be the knowers of the field, because that's what it's all about. O Sayan of Bharati, you should understand that I am also the knower in all bodies, and to understand this body and its knowers is called knowledge. If you look on the page, you see that it says knower there. But I think that, and, and we go through the purport, and is discussing that there's these two knowers, the soul and the super soul. So that's very pertinent to our present verse, because Krishna is describing uh, the super knower, the super soul. And <clears throat> we can't see him, although he's inside and outside, with all the moving and non-moving living entities, um, but he's very subtle, and therefore he is unknowable. Although he's very far away, he's very near as well. And this, this is, as was in previous verses, has an overtone, has kind of a, a, a resonance of the, the uh, Upanishadic relationship of the Gita. You'll see if you turn from the title page, it's also known as the Gita Upanishad. And we find, uh, I think the first instance of that is the Jayate Miya Kadeva If you go to the second chapter, that's, that's chapter, text 20. And it kind of summarizes a lot of what Krishna's been saying about the soul. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death at any time. It doesn't come into being uh, now or ever. He's unborn, eternal, ever-existing, and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. And then Prabhupada quotes a verse in the purport that's very similar from the Upanishads, saying the same thing. So this is uh, this idea that he's, he's far away, very near. He has no feet, but, he, but the, he can run faster than anyone. He has no hands, but he can accept all of our offerings. So the idea is he doesn't have hands like us, but he has hands. He doesn't have eyes like us, but he has eyes, and he can see everything, past, present, future, here and there and everywhere. So that, that, uh, that uh, idea of starting with our own experience of what it means to have a body and to have senses, and then extrapolating and then saying, yes, Krishna has eyes, but not exactly eyes like us. He can do everything that we can do with our, our eyes, but much more. He can see everything everywhere at all times, you know. So that, you know, stepping from, from, from our own limited experience into 
trying to understand the absolute, uh, it can't be done right off the bat. But with pur purification, we can come to perceive the Lord that way. And, and the great devotee, you know, Srila Prabhupada, he could come before the deities and talk to the deity. You know, he's having a conversation. And, and it, it may, he may be apparently saying something or not, you know, within, it's an internal, but he's really conversing. You know, and we, and we have faith in, in that. And that's one of the things that, that is unique about Prabhupada's books. I mean, we, we may write a book, and devotees have written their own Gitas. There's other Gitas that, you know, bear, of course, they're not identical to Prabhupada's, then they wouldn't be their own. But uh, Prabhupada's is unique in, in that when, you know, when he says we cannot understand uh, with these material senses, but one who has purified his mind and senses by practicing Krishna consciousness and devotion can see him constantly. He's talking about he can do that. You know, if I write that sentence, I can write it and say, the prophet says, you see. But I'm writing about Prabhupada, I'm not writing about me. <laughs> so it comes through in Prabhupada's books and in his lectures and when he speaks, that he's speaking from personal experience. And that, that changes everything. And, you know, that's why it's so important to, to have uh, the, 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 the association or the exposure to the words and the personality of a pure devotee in one's devotional life. Uh, because it, it, there's a whole different level of uh, impact when you understand, oh, this person is speaking, you know. There's, and there's no doubt, you know, in, in the purports, you see. Well, it could be this way or that way, we're not quite sure, you know. No, you don't find any of that. It's all he's simply speaking the absolute truth, and then he's often speaking about his own experience here. So that's why they're, they're uh, invaluable, you know, Srila Prabhupada's books. Uh, or any, you know, book written by those on that level, about, you know, talk or about the or something like that. So, um, and then Prabhupada makes the point here, well, how can we know? You know he can be seen and understood only by devotional service. Bhaktiya Tanananya Shakya. Shakya, this is from the 11th chapter. Uh, Prabhupada's favorite verse in that regard is in the 18th chapter. I forget, I think it's 55, if I'm not mistaken. Bhaktiya, bhaktiya mama bijanati yavan just chasmi tattataha. Bhaktiya mama bijanati. If one understands Krishna, how she wants to understand him, how do you go about it? You see? Well, you can try practicing Ashtanga yoga, becoming very austere, fasting, you know, every other day or whatever you, you know, come up with, and uh, trying to purify that way. But you may try from here to eternity. And you're not going to get the revelation because Krishna doesn't respond to that. He, 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 can only be, he can only be revealed or understood when he wants to be understood. It's all a question of revelation. We may make it as many as that, but unless we follow the, the program that Krishna prescribes for how we can uh, get that revelation, how he can, he can basically cut through all of, all of the illusion and all of the material energy that we've covered ourselves with and illuminate us. Uh, and he responds to the, the pure devotion. And that word tattvataha is there twice in that you know, very important verse. It comes up twice uh, in two other verses in the, in the Bhagavad Gita. Janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti tattvataha chakva deham puna janma naiti mamati sojana. So here, in the, in the fourth chapter, I think for the uh, ninth verse, he says, John McCormick to me, one who knows my birth and activities in truth, that word, truth, tattvataha, then when he gives up the body, he doesn't come back to another body, but he comes to me. You see? So, and I'm on a campaign, you know, because this is, you're seeing the, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, you know, is a, is a, is a result first of all, of a major uh, revision that took place in 1983. How many years is that ago now? That's like uh, almost more than 40, right? <laughs> so that was after uh, about 10 years of, of the original G of the Gita. It was, came out in 72, the, the unabridged Macmillan Gita. But it had some obvious mistakes, what to speak of unobvious ones, uh, that needed to be, to be fixed, and eventually they were. Thank you for your participation, Hare Krishna. And uh, so, and, and it's still going on. 
you know, because uh, there's a there's a whole process for doing it, and I don't want to get into detail of it. But it it involves a blue ribbon panel of some of our most learned devotees who are review, reviewing the revisions that have been made and any any future revisions we suggest now. Uh, Banu Swami, who's who's an incredible author, he's he's writing. He he gets up at you know twelve at night or or, you know, or earlier. You know, and he writes books. He's come out with a huge number of books, such as go, go, the Gopal Champu and uh, a, whole, a whole other series of books. Um, very, very learned. So he's on the panel to review the suggested changes. And uh, one of the ones that I wanted to, uh, that I referred to when I went back to 13.3, this idea that... It's not, oh, so you should understand that I am also the knower in all bodies, and to understand this body and its knower is called knowledge. That is my opinion. So I, from the beginning, I was wondering about that. Well, I'm also the knower. That, may, that makes two knowers, because the first one is the soul. We are the soul. Chaitra Gya. The knower, Gya, of the Chaitra, field. This is a field, a field of activity, our, our body. You know, Even when we see something, we know from third grade or fourth grade, whenever we learned, that yes, the light enters into the eye and it hits the retina and is it, is a, 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 the nerves that go to the brain and that's what seeing is all about. So what are we actually perceiving? We're perceiving what's going on in the retina. We see it outside, but it's our soul through the nervous system and the whole complicated arrangement perceiving the, the changes in the, in the retina. And the same holds also for all the senses. When we smell something, there's something going on in the nose. When we hear something in, in, the, ear, in the eardrum, we hear it as out there. Well, that was, where did that come from? Oh, that was across the street. But that's just the way the ear works. It's really, we're hearing, we're, we're perceiving what's happening on the eardrum. So that's the, that's the field. This is our field. And we, the soul, are inside this field. And we're perceiving and acting through the field. But when we perceive something, so well, that sounds pretty good, and you want to get closer to it or turn up the volume or something, so all kinds of other stuff is happening. So you have the, the, the gyan endrias, gyan means knowledge, and means senses, knowledge receiving senses, which we commonly call senses, the ears, the eyes, the tongue, the touch, and the smell, right? And then you have the active senses, the hands, the feet, you know? The most important for a devotee, the voice, very important. Where would we be without the voice? <laughs> Nothing would be going on, right? <laughs> oh, I can't. That's why I, I have the. I have my. I even brought them with me. My little special high-powered uh, uh, cough drops because my voice is a little congested. <laughs> so that's very active. And then you know the feet and everything. And then for reproduction, that's there and excretion. You know those are there. So we have these these ten senses, and that's the field we're acting on. You know, but Krishna's also in there. And not in the, only here, but in there, in the body of every ant, he's there. He's, you know, by, by instinct, the ant goes, knows, go here. He has no intelligence, basically. But it's rudimentary, but still the same program is there. So, uh, so uh, I, I, I consulted with my, I just got the, got the notice back today from my, my Kishore, who's the Sanskritist. Can this word, Chaitra Gayo, Chaitra Gayo, which is in the second line of text 3 on 531, translated as the knower of the field, can it also mean the knowers of the field? And actually I asked Ramapati. Ramapati had studied some Sanskrit in Gurukul and Mayapur, so he knew, he gave me that same answer. Yes, it is, it's plural. And then, so the whole thing is going to be, there's a whole purport there, which I'm not going to go through, where, where the, the, the knowledge is knowledge of the field and the knowers of the field. If you just know, that, you just know something about the soul, that's rudimentary. But you also have to know that there's another soul in there, the super soul. And, tr and understanding both the chaitra and, the, and both souls in their position, that's the foundation of the real knowledge in Krishna consciousness. Because that's the lesson one in chapter two, right? In the beginning, Arjuna was so concerned about killing his uh, his, his beloved guru, guru on the other side who is, is uh, taught in martial arts and his, his grandfather Bhishma, you see, and so many other relatives and friends and everything. So he, he was, he was uh, making his judgment 
and responding to the feelings that he was feeling on the bodily relationship. But he had the more important relationship with Krishna, who was right on the, on the uh, chariot with him. Krishna wanted him to fight. And, see how, and so he had to convince him that his concern was ultimately part of illusion, that that relationship is temporary anyway, and that nobody is killed. You know, my little ditty is based on that. Everybody dies, nobody dies. Right? Everybody dies. Space. We have to see this. Every body dies. But nobody dies. Wake up, wake up, and open your eyes. You're not that body, you're a pure spirit soul. Chant the holy name and attain life's goal. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it'll ever be included in the Bhagavad Gita. But it's based on Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> So that's, that's basically what Krishna is telling Arjuna in the second chapter. Hey, you're speaking learned, so-called learned words, like a, this is the first words he speaks in the role of a guru. So he's getting on his case. Before that he was saying, oh, this will look very bad for you. They'll you, think you're a coward if you leave the, the field. You know? He's speaking more or less like a regular... Uh, chariot driver. The chariot driver has a big responsibility to buck up the courage of the warrior on the chariot. Or in the, there was a the whole battle in, in the tenth canto. I forget with whom, but Pujumna was out there and he was hit in the chest, knocked out. And so the chariot driver took him off the battlefield. And when he wake up, what do you do? You took me from the battlefield because it's 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 a very it looks bad if you get from the battlefield. He said, no no no, this is my duty, you know, for the, to to protect the. Uh, I said, okay, take me back on. So he went in the back end and he fought, you know, killed the enemy. But, but uh, so Krishna was fulfilling that function. There was nothing transcendental when he, when he said, Arjun, you don't think you're a coward. It's, that's not going to look good for you. It's not, that's not, you know, not, it's, not, <laughs> it's, it's Krishna speaking. But, it's, but then when he surrendered as the, the disciple, he said, okay, I'm confused about my duty. That's the main, I don't know what I should do. So he had dropped his bow, he sat down on the chariot, which is the last thing you're going to do before a battle. And, and he said, uh, Govinda, I shall not fight. Actually, he said, to Govinda, I shall not fight, but anyway. So then Govinda started speaking to him. And so, yeah, basically called him a fool. A short chan, I'm a short chan, chan, pragya varang shabash, say. You're lamenting for what is not worthy of lamenting, of grief. You're speaking so called learned words, but you're foolish. You know? And then he basically explained to him that the soul is eternal, the body is temporary. And so just as we, we ourselves, this is one of the greatest verses, because anyone can understand this, even a child, you know, that, all right, then Mukunda, you know, you know, there's this boy named Mukunda. He's just so Mukunda, you know, you know, and I, I was watching him shoot up as he grew. You know, could you see every week he'd be measurably taller, you know, and he's getting bigger. So, Mukunda, you remember when you were five, right? Six, you remember some things in it? Yeah, sure. So now you're eight, or whatever it is, seven and a half. You're bigger now, right? Don't you feel you're bigger? You say, yeah, yeah, I can change. So you're the same Mukunda, right? Prabhu. But uh, your body has changed. So that means you're not this, the body, right? What are you? I'm the spirit soul. So he knows from Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> so that, that's, that's the whole idea, that we're all like that. None of us die. All of us have had previous lives, and we're going to have a future life. So if in this body we can do something where we'll actually regain our eternal body, our eternal existence, we should go for it. Otherwise, we're trapped in this, this cycle of birth, death, old age, disease, birth, death, old age, disease, birth, and not only in human form, but down in lower bodies. So when you see the reality of it, and you believe it, then you understand the urgency of uh, getting the knowledge and starting the practice based on that knowledge. So part of the knowledge is here in the 13th chapter. 13 through 18, Prabhupada makes it very clear that the middle six chapters are the essence of the Gita. And the other chapters kind of support that. So we're dealing now with, with subject matters that have already been dealt with to some degree. We've heard about the soul before, and the body, and all these things. But he's giving more uh, detail. And so that our knowledge will be fixed up and we'll be more determined to want to surrender at the end of the book. Okay, any questions on text 16, is it? It's easy to remember since this is the 16th, right? All right. If no local or remote questions, let's go on. Actually, we did text... All right. 
I'm going to be in the right chapter. Yeah. Bharandastabhutanam. And now let's go on to 17. Avibhaktam chabhuteshu. Vibhaktam ivachastitam. Bhutta bhartar chathar gheyam. Grasishnu prabhavishnucha. Although the super soul appears to be divided among all beings, he is never divided. He is situated as one. Although he is the maintainer of every living entity, it is to be understood that he devours and develops all. Purport. The Lord is situated in everyone's heart as the super soul. Does this mean that he has become divided? No. Actually, he is one. The example is given of the sun. The sun at the meridian is situated in his place. But if one goes for 5,000 miles in all directions and asks, where is the sun? Everyone will say that it is shining on his head. In the Vedic literature, this example is given to show that although he is undivided, he is situated as if divided. Also, it is said in the Vedic literature that one Vishnu is present everywhere by his omnipotence, just as the sun appears in many places to many persons. And the Supreme Lord, although the maintainer of every living entity, devours everything at the time of annihilation. This was confirmed in the 11th chapter, when the Lord said that he had come to devour all the warriors assembled at Kurukshetra. He also mentioned that in the form of time he devours also. He is the annihilator, the killer of all. When there is creation, he develops all from their original state. And at the time of annihilation, he devours them. The Vedic hymns confirm the fact that he is the origin of all living entities and the rest of all means the place where they rest. After creation, everything rests in his omnipotence and after annihilation, everything again returns to rest in him. These are the confirmations of Vedic hymns. Yato vahimani bhutani jayante yena jatani jivanti yat prayant abhisambhishanti tad brahma tad vijaja Upanishad So this is a little bit grim, you know, it's, it's kind of sobering. He's de- going to devour everything, destroy everything. So that, you know, this, we hear about this all the time. Our, our little personal annihilations are going to take place. You know, our little unit. It's it's interesting. This is explained in one place in the Bhagavatam. I can't recall exactly where. But each each of us has a body, and it's a little mini universe in one sense. So much is going on, you know, that we're not aware of to maintain the body day by day. It's going on, right? Complicated, and we're in there providing the energy, the the conscious. If we're not in there, the body, right? That's what death is. So the soul is there. Super soul is there. And all kinds of bodily functions are going on. The, the consciousness is there wherever the blood flows. You know, the example is nice. That your, your finger, you know, you, you have, your consciousness is there, but the fingernail, you can cut, and you, know, you don't feel any pain. Same thing with the hair, right? So it, there's no blood in there. So that's a, an arrangement. But obviously it's, it's delicate. You know, we've all been sick in our day, you know, and maybe had injury. I keep burning myself with my iron. You know, <laughs> I'm getting old. So, but luckily, you know, I was, I was a little disturbed. You know, I had to put the thing on. Wasn't, and then finally it healed up. I said, oh, another miraculous heal up, you know. But that happens only so long. At a certain point, you know, well, sorry, Mr. Donor, you got a terminal this, terminal that. I said, okay, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> We're all terminal sitting here, let's face it. <laughs> But, uh, but uh, in, a, in a larger sense, we're never terminal. It means that we're not going to die. You know? We're just going to change cars. We're just going to change vehicles. So we can see that. So, so in the super soul, you know, he's, our, he's our best friend. It's important to understand this, the, this word surit. This comes up at the end of the... Welcome. Uh, seven, 548. Page 548 at the top. Yeah, we just read this, this verse. So, uh, what does he say there? Uh, fifth chapter at the end. You know that one? The peace formula? Why is this? Bahunam, janmanam, ante, gyanavamam, papadjate. 
Yeah, we're on text 17 of the 13th chapter. I'm just quoting this chapter from the, from the uh, verse from the 5th chapter. Prabhupada called this the peaceful one. How you can become peaceful? Because that's there in the book, in the verse. Bahunam janmanam ante jnana papadyate. No, that's a different verse. Oh, God. All right, 529. Let's look it up. It's serious, because this is a famous verse. I should... I don't have any excuse for me forgetting this one. Bhuktaram yagyatapasang sarvaloka maheshwaram suridam sarvabhutanam gyatvamam shantam vrichati. A person in full consciousness of me, knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attains peace from the pangs of material miseries. Now, just just understanding everything except that Suridam line, that, that's, that's not very encouraging. That's not peaceful. Person full kind of me, knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices, austerities, supreme lord of all planets and demigods, the benefactor, uh, well, and well wisher of all the beginnings. Yes, attains peace from the pangs. If you don't know, he's, he's the benefactor. He's at, this he's describing himself as the super soul. It's very pertinent because he's describing the super soul here. So he's the enjoyer of all sacrifice. He controls everything. But most important, he is our best well-wisher. This word suridam, Prabhupada would end all his letters. He would read the letters. Reading the letters is very fascinating because he's having this, you know, one-on-one, you know, he's, a letter to, and he's, he's managing the whole movement like that, writing letters. So he would say, you're every well-wisher. A.C. Bhaktivedanta. He would never say, you're every well-wisher. His divine grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. No, he would never say anything. It's just A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. <laughs> so, uh, but that idea that this super powerful person who's is all pervading in everyone's heart, he knows everything past, present, and future, is the source of all power, he devours all, all of this, you know. But he's our ever well wisher, he's our friend, and uh, the best friend that could possibly be. A surit is a friend who always has your best wishes in, in mind. Now, we, we may have a good friend, but not that good. Right? If you, if you say, oh, you know, I, I, my, my friend kicked me out of the house. Can, you, can I put me up for a few days? Oh, cool. Come on. You can stay here. But then when it gets to be one week, two weeks, three weeks, you say, Prabhu, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't stay here forever, you know. So, but Krishna says, yeah, you come back to the spiritual world. You can stay here forever. <laughs> In my home. <laughs> so, so Krishna is our best well-wisher. And uh, in all circumstances. And if we, you know, try to do some service for him, we're thinking about him, chanting his name, trying to serve him, then we're going to get a reciprocation. And the reciprocation comes uh, uh, in, in, usually in the, at first in a very subtle form. And that is one of this, this idea of peace get, take, gets peace. So the peace means that, oh, you know, the ups and downs of this world don't bother you as much. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're really Krishna conscious. All right, you get this, you lose it. All right, but I still can chant Hare Krishna, right? You take shelter of the holy name, and you can get such refuge there and, 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 and go through so many difficulties just by chanting Hare But I'm telling you, devotees that went through so much in this movement, the history of the Bombay temple or the Mumbai temple, of course, uh, Giri Raiswami wrote a whole book about it, about how difficult it was to get the land and then be able to build there, you know. And it was actually, but then when it was finally opened in 78, Prabhupada wasn't there. He had already left. Uh, I wasn't there either, but I was there in a couple of months before it opened. A tremendous facility with two big uh, towers of, of rooms, of hotels, and the big temple. You've been there? Yeah, you know. But then there was a whole period in the, in the uh, 80s early 80s, where there was still a lot of local opposition. And in fact, there was a raid there, One and, and they had, we had our guards we had paid, and he was trying to stop some guy from throwing something, and he hit his head with a, with a stick and killed him. And there was, there, was a, there was a big case, and devotees were arrested and put in jail, you know? And so uh, that was happening also when Prabhu was on the planet. Not so seriously, but, you know, Australia, they would arrest him and put him in the, you know, on, on Harinam and other places. It didn't happen in the U.S., I don't think. But anyway, Prabhupada said, don't worry, what's the problem? Just keep chanting in the jail. You know, you just keep chanting and, and, and you can chant. So, so I heard about that because I knew some of the devotees who were arrested. And so it wasn't just that 
can you run and try to close whatever doors you can close between this and the noise? Basically, the kitchen door. And uh, so there's a passage in the Nectar of Devotion where uh, one devotee, he's a simple devotee, and he, uh, he learns about doing puja. And then, so he's, he's, of course, he's making offerings, cooking, you know, and offerings. So that one day he made some sweet rice. And uh, the sweet rice is supposed to be cool to offer, you know. So he wanted to check if it was cool enough yet. So he dipped his finger, but it was really hot and it burned his finger. And uh, so, but there was, but, but then we, okay, well, they have that situation. And then you, uh, <laughs> Well, you, 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 there's a fast forward, and then you have a vision of what Narayan is doing in the, in the spiritual world, and he's laughing. And, 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 and the, the uh, Lakshmi is saying, what are you laughing at? Is it my, my devotee? But actually, he didn't put his finger in the sweet rice. He was very poor, and he really didn't have the facility to get the rice and the sugar and the, you know, all these things. But he had been to a meeting where it said, well, you can do all this in your head. You know, you can serve Manasa Seva. If you can't externally, you can do all the things in your head and get the same benefit. Because Krishna is looking for the Baba. And if you're sincerely serving him, even internally, he accepts that as much as if you have some very elaborate thing. So he was doing that regularly. Very poor, but he was making these nice offerings and he was advancing, you know. But here, he's, in, his, in his meditation, he was checking the sweet, right? The sweet, it was hot. In his meditation, and he got burned. And he actually got burned, you see, his finger was burned, even though it was mental sweet rice. So Lakshmi was asking Narayan, why are you laughing? He's looking in the, you know, from these, oh my, just telling him what I told you, you know, my, my, my servant is now, you know. So at that point, he just ended it all. He took him back to Vakunta. You know, he got sent a plane and they took him back to Vakunta. <laughs> so that, that was uh, going on. You know, even with, with us. I mean, the, the prophet said, you can make those offerings, and they, they understood it. He was, prophet was already gone. This is the early 80s. So they would do these, you know, they'd have kirtans. I don't know if they had instruments, but they were able to clap. You can always clap. And in the jail cell, I think they were able to stay together. And then they would have these elaborate Sunday feasts, you know, and then they'd cook, you know, with pakoras and all kinds of subjis, you know. And they would then honor them, and the, and the guards were looking, what are these guys doing, you know? <laughs> but that's the way they got through it, through weeks, and it wasn't, wasn't a big traumatic experience, you know? They eventually let them out, there wasn't much charge, you know? So all those things are available. And, uh, okay, and so these are some of the, the uh, inconceivable things, you know? He, he, he appears to be divided, but he's not divided, he's the maintainer, but he's also devours, he develops all. This is the idea. And, and in our own little lives, you know, we often, we're going to have creation, maintenance, and ultimately destruction, and all disappear. So the idea is that before that disappearance comes, we're, we can actually have peace even at that time when we're fully convinced of, of Krishna and we're especially surrounded by devotees reminding us of Krishna. And we can, we can face that moment. I mean, I've seen it so many times. Devotees ask me, I've, I've mentioned this several times, to, to sing at the, by, by the side of their hospital bed when that's happening, you know. Cause it, and so I come, and there's always other devotees there, and we have a kirtan. I remember this one lady, and she used to come to class all the time. Her name was Padmavati. She was initiated. She lived nearby here. She had joined. She was kind of older. She was in her 40s, I think, uh, when she joined. And uh, Phyllis, her name was, and she got initiated. And she had been a smoker, you know, for, for, for years and decades. And she had COPD. I don't know if you know what that is. It's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which comes from a lot of smoking, you know. So it's, it's not curable. And, you know, it got worse. Eventually she started bringing her oxygen tank to the, to the, to the class and everything, you know. But she was a you know, serious devotee. And then I, it was a Kadashi. It was 2011 in January. And uh, she called me up, well, I'm going into the hospital. I said, what's, what's the matter? I can't breathe. And, it was a, and so she was there. And so I went there with this other devotee who also passed away in the last couple of years, Rajendra Nandana. And he was, he was at an apartment here. He would travel with Mayapur a lot, but he was here. So we went there to sing, you know, to sing for her. 
And she had these these children. I think one daughter and a few sons. Who she she they, he, she notified, and they had flown in from. They lived in different parts of the of the country, you know. So they were there. These two sons and a daughter. Anyway, so we're chanting away and uh, uh, by the by the bedside, and there's almost like a melody that we use. It's like the original melody, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, very peaceful, you know. Krishna Krishna Hare Hare. It's probably the original melody. So anyway, we're chanting, 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 and then another another couple of devotees came in. Now, this is one you, some of you may know, Ladali. She's coming she's around. She's there's this devotee named Mahabharat who cooks on Friday here. They've been here forever, and uh, she uh, adopted, if you will, the care of this uh, elder dev devotee who'd been here for many years since the early 70s. You you remember her, uh, Vajravadu. She was 99 years old at this time, I think. Or 98. She had passed away at 99, if I remember. So anyway, uh, they also came and started chanting. You know, Vajrabadu, who herself you know, could disappear at any moment. She's chanting. They left after a little while because Vajrabadu had some medical thing going on. And then the, then the daughter came in, or, 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 or Phyllis, of uh, Padmavati, and said, okay, we're going to, it's time. You know, we, we consulted the doctors and she's not coming out of this, so we want to pull the plug, so to speak. So I said, okay, well, it's really good if we can keep chanting, you know. I said, no, 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 this is a, this is a family thing, you know. I said, oh, what are we going to, so we, what, we left, we left, we went a couple of doors down, there was a waiting room there, you know, waiting, waiting, okay. And then after maybe 15 minutes, one of the sons came in and said, you better come back because she's not leaving. She's not, you know, she's, <laughs> she, because, she, you know, she, she, <laughs> she didn't want to leave without the holy name. So we went back in and started chanting, and within like five minutes, she was gone, peacefully gone. You know, and there's so many stories. I'm not going to get into them of of wonderful uh, departures. This is the auspicious way to depart. And so uh, all of this study and under, you know understanding of 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 the super soul and uh, the super soul basically means Krishna is always with us at every moment. We should understand, and he's he's giving us. He, as he explains in the 15th chapter, the knowledge that we have, you know, remembrance and forgetfulness, you know, uh, like, you know, I memorized a lot of verses, obviously, over the years, but sometimes I'm forgetting them, you know, because he also gives the forgetfulness. What he's telling me is you're not reviewing the verses enough. Dravida Das. That's why you couldn't remember it. Like, I was wondering, trying to remember one verse about Radharani. Uh... I don't want to... Oh, it's getting a little late. So this is... Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this. It's called uh, Namaste Shri Rade, Namaste Shri Sham. He's heard this. You see? <laughs> I get into trouble. I, I wrote that line. I didn't, I didn't even pull that out of the shot. Gunagrai Swami. At last, I think his last trip here was 2015. And uh, he got on my case. For, for, you know, what are you writing some, you know, song for? We're supposed to sing. He said, I didn't write that song. You know, that wasn't something that was... A, anyway, it was <laughs> part of a, of a, a thing with Sura Prabhu, my friend in, in, in uh, L.A. who passed away a few years ago. We worked together for many years. And he was, he was, a, he was a really staunch preacher, and he would go to the yoga studios unit, and he would sing, you know, with, with other devotees, bhajan and sell books there and everything he was doing. So he knew my propensity with the shlokas and things. And so he said, so when he made a CD, he invited me to uh, have a cut on there. So uh, the last cut I did, because this one became so popular, the devotees were burning that cut off. You know, he did, uh, he said, okay, that's the last one you're doing, you know. Uh, it was, it was a, a, a series of verses by Rupa Goswami in a certain meter uh, that I made into a song, you know, this, I think it was four or five verses. And then I, I needed a, 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 a refrain line, a line that would fit into the meter. So I said, I came up with this, Namaste Shri Radhe, Namaste Shri Sham. So it fits into this, Smita Loka Shokam, Hadajita Katam Yasipadito, Gidan to Pradamba, Krishna Patalim Palabhayati. That's the meter. This is Sanskrit, it's incredible. So then, and then after, you know, three lines, uh, three or four lines, Namaste Shri Radhe, Namaste Shri Sham. So anyway, I was, I was going through that in my head, you know, as waking up and going through some of the verses, and I couldn't remember one verse. 
I said, well, is, if I just get the first word, I, can, you know, I couldn't do it, you know. And then, uh, hours later, after the morning program, you know, uh, suddenly it came to me, you know, the first word, balad, which means by, st by strength. Balad akshnur lakshmi kavalayadina vyam kuvalayam makol asak pullam kamalavalam ulangi yaticha tasham kashtam ashta padamapinayat yang karuji vichitram radhaya kimipikaladu pamulasati namaste shi radhe namaste. Anyway, I'll give, if you want, I'll, I'll give you the cut. So what it what uh, <laughs> so what it balad means the beauty balad akshna lakshmi the beauty of Shimati Radharani's eyes forcibly devours the beauty of blue lotus flowers like kavalai navyam kavalai mukola and her face is so beautiful it devours it, it overwhelms the beauty of whole uh, forest full of lotus flowers and the sham Krishna, her complexion golden complexion puts even gold into a painful situation thus that's what Prabhupada's translation thus the uh, the beauty of Srimadhi Radharani is awakening in Vrindavan, you know. So that's super song, you know. I hadn't chanted it in a while, and he said, no, I'm not going to give you the remembrance, you know, teach you a lesson. And then it came to me, he gave him, Balad, Balad, Akshnur, Lakshmi. <laughs> so that's how uh, we can read the, uh, the Shastra and, and experience what's being spoken here. Which, did we just do 17 or 18? Seventeen. Okay, so it's getting a little late. Any questions, comments? I'm sorry, we're kind of all over the place, but that's what we got tonight. All right. One more. One, do you have something? Okay. One. One poem. Is that okay? All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. So this is a prayer by Rupa Goswami. The typical prayer. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting it. Super soul. Come on. Uh, this this one I know. This is from uh, the uh, <laughs> Krishna Karnamita. Everybody dies, but nobody dies. Yeah, Jaya 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 Deva 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 Chuba Bana Mangala Dimya Nama Deha Jaya 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 Deva Krishna Deva Shavana Mano Naya Nama Tavatara O glory, 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 Lord, O glory unto thee who with thy holy name bless all three worlds and set them free. O glory, glory, glory unto thee, O Krishna Dev, whose nectar floods our ears and eyes and hearts in endless waves. Go premanandi, hari hari bo. All right, just remember this one thing. Try to remember this, okay? Since pleasure is a dream, Krishna supreme, the aim is prem, and the way is the name. Okay? All right. I have a t-shirt at home. <laughs> <laughs> All glory to Srila Prabhupada, hari hari bo. <laughs>